three hours late. Who knows when they will arrive with this storm brewing. Oh, the, the best laid plans of mice and men. Good heavens, uh, must you continually sneak up on me while I'm thinking? That's terribly upsetting. I told you to wait downstairs until I called for you. I'm sorry, Dr. Frankenstein. I must speak with you. The, the monster is getting restless. And the last time he was like this, he, he broke his chains and tore the door right off the hinges. I'm doing the best I can. Oh, the burden of a reputation. Oh, grandfather, why did I ever find your laboratory notes and embark on this hideous career? Look at this face, Igor. <laughs> <laughs> Once I was young and happy, now I am mine with furry wrinkles. Oh, your grandfather was a great man. How often my old grandfather, Igor, would describe their work together, out at night, digging up graves, cutting criminals down from scaffolding, and cutting and sewing, and cutting and sewing, out, out in the muck and mire, looking for just the right part. Ooh, yuck, I'm glad I wasn't there. <laughs> yes, yes, I know all the stories well. My grandfather created a monster out of men, an indestructible creature. The only problem was the monster's brain, thanks to your grandfather. Oh, Grandfather Igor can't be blamed. He couldn't read. How is he to know that the brain he stole from that university laboratory was the brain of a dimwit? Oh, he should have recognized a comrade. Oh, what a wonderful night. On such a night was the creature born. Uh, that lightning is his mother. It gave him the power of a hundred men. Ah, how proud our grandfathers were. <laughs> ah, reminiscing. We have plenty of problems of our own. Trying to correct the mistakes of the past. The brain transfer machine is ready. We no longer have to operate to change the monster's brain. Using the fluorite crystal, the machine spins the brain in a billion particles, sends it through space, and reassembles them in a new cranium. Oh, oh, it's wonderful, Master. It's wonderful. When do we begin? As soon as we find the right brain for the monster. I know where there is a perfect brain. Oh, where? Here. No. Well, it's a perfectly good brain. It's never been used. There are brains. And then there are brains. I refuse to discuss it further. Yes, Master. Now, hopefully, the right brain will arrive this evening. With all this lightning, we shall have added energy for the perfect transfer. I have advertised this castle as a hotel with all the travel agencies from Berlin to Los Angeles. I had expected a large supply of brains. But so far, only one group has made reservations. <laughs> they will be here tonight. And with everything in readiness, I must use one of these brains tonight. Oh, I almost forgot. You must not call me Dr. Frankenstein anymore. I am Baron Henry von Frankenmeyer. Do you understand? Uh, yes, Doctor. Uh, Baron, Baron. Uh, I've been meaning to ask you. We have no servants here. How can we run a hotel without maids and cooks and bellhops? Oh, simple. You will do it. <laughs> Me? But I do everything already. I cook the meals. I fetch and carry. I, I, I watch the monster all night. And now you want me to carry baggage and run room service. Ugh, that is too much. I quit. Wait. Wait, 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 you don't understand. If one of our guests is chosen for the honor of the brain transfer, then you will be in the perfect position to plant the crystal on him. You know I have not yet learned to focus the rays of the machine. I have placed one crystal on the creature, and this one must be placed 
I'm the body of the victim. Subject, whose brain is to be transferred. I cannot succeed without your help. Do not desert me in my hour of need. I shall be lost without you. There, 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 master. I won't leave you. How can you think such a thing of a kind, hard-working Igor? Oh, very well, very well. Go get the rooms ready. Our guests should be arriving shortly. A family of American tourists. Oh, quickly, quickly. Mix another sedative. We do not want him frightening our guests. Use the good whiskey tonight. Perhaps we should be grateful he hid in the brewery the last time he escaped. He is so much easier to sedate now. And make sure those chains are secure. The energy transfer may be more violent than we had calculated. And we do not want him running around the countryside mauling the villagers. Remember you, too. 
It was really harmless, Henry. I was only trying to make Vlad jealous. You escaped me with your trickery and Igor was available. <laughs> but Igor? How could Vlad suspect Igor? I was desperate. I had to take what I could get. Vlad is so jealous he believes whatever he thinks he sees. But I assure you, if you do not give me a room, <coughs> you and Igor will suffer more than any man have ever suffered. Oh, all right, but don't mingle with the guests. I promise not to mingle up. Master! 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 Ooh. Hello, my little pet. My, how you haven't changed. <laughs> what, what is she doing here? Oh, she just flew in for a little visit. There's nothing to worry about. Because of you, I was beaten. The dogs were set on me. I was chased over half of Transylvania. I swore revenge. Hey, 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 get out! Hey, you can't grab on. Give me my control. I will not drain myself next time. Now, please, show me to my room. And when my trunk arrives, bring it up! I am Baron Henry von Frankenmeyer, your host. Julius T. Woodknocker here, and this is Mrs. Woodknocker and all the little Woodknockers. My car. Swell place you have here. Early gargoyle? When do we eat? I'll have two fried eggs, two post eggs, two ground scrambled eggs, and two boiled eggs, and roast beef. Rare, medium, well done, and overdone. Have you got any stewed prunes? Oh, I suppose so. Well, give them some black coffee, that ought to sober them up. I want to get one thing perfectly straight. I'm here for relaxation and rest. I suffer from a case of nerves and I lie awake all night trying to go to sleep. And I must have quiet. Quiet! Papa's really shaking up in Paris. Well, I'm sure he's not going to be able to
Well, what I mean, sir, is the travel agency wired there would be five of you. Ah, that'd be our fifth will, Mrs. McGonagall. She's out in the car and refuses to come in. She says this place reminds her of something out of a monster picture. Can't imagine why. Ah, Mrs. McGonagall, when you see her, you'll think she looks like an idiot. And when she speaks, you'll think she sounds like an idiot. But don't let that fool you. She's an idiot. <laughs> Ruth, what? See if you... I must make do. 
There's no time to get another. With all this lightning, the energy in the machine will be ready at 11 o'clock. I will give the crystal to Igor, and then he will place it on... Which one? The boy? Not old enough. Mrs. McGonagall. Oh, never! Not, <laughs> not Mrs. Woodknocker or the girl. There is only one choice, unfortunately. Mr. Woodknocker! As soon as the crystal is planted, we will sedate him. And then, at 11 o'clock, my monster will have a new brain! Oh, the thrill of it! Oh, answer the door. Whoever it is, get rid of them. Then keep an eye on our guests. We don't want to lose any of them. I must reject the instruments. Really? Oh, thank you. 
I'm afraid it's true, though. I haven't had anyone else to speak to except my family. Since we came on this trip, I don't speak French or German. Oh, well, I speak English like a native. I've lived in England for many years. Oh, I love England. It's history and all. I'd like to go to London someday. We didn't go there this time. <laughs> <laughs> Shortly after they were married. Oh, uh, you're, uh, your father's an actor. Yes, a comedian. You know, at home, well, it's quite ordinary. Fun, but not too different for most of us. But when he gets out in public, he turns into the most outrageous character. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, do you know what I mean? Mm. Uh, yes, yes, I'm afraid I know very well. When will this torment end? Are you all right, Mr. Talbot? It's only a storm. Yes. <laughs> yes, it's only a storm. Well, anyway, um, my mother used to be a dancer with my father's play company. Bidding me to retire, I, I think she resented a little and still does. Father hasn't been feeling well, nerves and insomnia. So his doctor he suggested a trip, but he hasn't been feeling much better. He gets seasick at the mention of a ship. And the ship we were on sat so high in the water that it rolled from side to side, standing still to die. That's very amusing. Uh, father didn't think so. You know, I, I don't believe I've laughed for years until this very moment. Oh, Mr. Talbot, I believe. <laughs> yes, and you are. Mr. Frankenmeyer. Frankenmeyer? Oh, yes, I see. I must speak with you, Mr. Frankenmeyer. Oh, well, don't let me disturb you. I hope to see you again, Mr. Talbot. You're very interesting to talk to. Uh, Mr. Frankenmeyer, where are your tennis courts? Uh, tennis courts? <laughs> oh, well, I'll have Igor string some netting up tomorrow morning in the garden. Thank you. I'll see you later, Mr. Talbot. Oh, please, call me Larry. I would like to see you again. You make me forget my troubles. Where am I going Hi. to get a tennis match? Oh, don't argue. Just do it. Oh, oh, oh. But first, get something for the uh, uh, Melvin. <laughs> Melvin? Melvin. Oh, Melvin. Still playing with monsters, Dr. Frankenstein? Don't call me doctor. And it's none of your business what I'm doing. What do you want? I'll take a drink first. Igor, a drink for Mr. Talbot. And I'll have one, too. I have a feeling this is going to be a long night. And now tell me, Mr. Talbot, what do you want? Well, you obviously know who I am. Doctor, I can't go through another full moon like the last one. You don't know what it's like to go month after month, year after year, knowing that no matter what you're doing or where you are, you will change, too. Your body is racked with agony. You are hunted like a wild beast. <laughs> Doctor, you must cure me. Oh, that, that girl, I... I don't even dare be nice to her, let alone be friendly. Doctor, you must cure me. <laughs> oh, that would be impossible. It would take months, perhaps years of study, before I could attempt to cure. Then kill me, Doctor! You will do the same for a mad dog! Oh, calm down. Calm down. Perhaps there is a way. It would take some time and some trial and error. But... Uh, there are possibilities. I will strike a bargain with you. If you will help me with my experiment, then I will help you. Agreed. Once you begin, there will be no turning back. Agreed? Yes, yes. Let us drink to our partnership, to success, to freedom. <laughs> Here, Melvin. <laughs> now, listen carefully. This is a fluorite crystal. It is very rare. It is the key to your future happiness. But you must make no mistakes. What must I do? I was going to give this crystal to Igor, but a man who is desperate will make certain that nothing goes wrong. This crystal focuses the rays of my brain transfer machine. You what? I don't have time for details. You must have this crystal placed on the body of Mr. Woodknocker. Woodknocker? It's a Isn't girl's that... father, yes. He's a little strange. Actually, he's a lot strange. <laughs> but he is intelligent. And if my experiment works, I can retrain him as I want him. 
The energy from the machine is focused through the crystal. The brain is changed into a billion particles and sent through space. It takes several hours to build up the energy necessary to make the transfer. It will be ready tonight at 11 o'clock. You must have this crystal placed on the body of Mr. Woodknocker before then. If you are still in possession of the crystal, then your brain will be in the brain of the monster, and the monster's brain will be in, in you. You have just one hour. Do not fail. I'm not sure I understand. You want to steal some poor man's... Oh, no. It's too soon. The full moon, it isn't until tomorrow. <laughs> the sedative, Igor, you idiot! Did you call? Oh, Mr. Woodknocker! Ah, it's good to see you again, but I have no one to blame but myself. <laughs> Lovely weather we're having. A bit chilly, but it keeps the ice from melting. Doctor. Doctor? Uh, I am a doctor. Where is the horse? Ah, it's just as I suspected. You are smoking too much. Oh, Mr. Woodmucker, it's Talbot. He's fainted. Now, do not tell me. I shall find out for myself. I cannot help this man. He has fainted. What he needs is a long ocean voyage. In the meantime, I shall be out in the garden. If he shall recover, don't blame me. Oh, Mr. Woodmucker, it may start raining, and you would get wet in the garden. Getting wet would not be good for your health. So I meant that if the sun was out, I'd get a sunstroke. Remember, I am an incurable insomniac, and the only cure for insomnia is water. Yes, water, and lots of gin to go with it. Why, did you know that I lay up nights trying to think of ways to go to sleep? I used to worry, but I couldn't go to sleep then either. So I decided that I would think about other things. Like, uh, what would you have if you had a room full of blondes with powdered sugar in their hair? I don't have the faintest idea. Frosted flakes. Oh. Insomnia <laughs> is terrible. Oh. Oh, that, that, that man is crazy. Perhaps I've made a mistake. Now what am I going to do with Talbot? I can't just leave him lying here. That's it. I'll put him in here until I can get Igor to remove him to the dungeons. Pretty handy for finding out things. 
things. <laughs> so, this is the Wolfman. And this is the Crystal. Wait till I tell Pop. He'll never believe this. A real Wolfman. Mr. Talbot? Mr. Talbot? Oh, darn. First man I've met on this trip, and I don't even get to see him. <laughs> well, I suppose I'll see him in the morning. Maybe we'll skip tennis, take a long stroll in the woods, and then we can sit under the trees and talk. Oh, Miriam, have you seen your father? No, I haven't, Mother. Well, he's off wandering again, then. Probably out bothering the hotel personnel or the other guests. Come to think of it, I haven't seen any other guests. Well, there's one man I've met. Oh. Yes, he's a young man. Very interesting looking. Now, when did you meet him? When I was asking Mr. Frankenmeyer where the tennis courts are. Did Mr. Frankenmeyer happen to tell you where the bathrooms are? There's just a picture of water in a bowl in my room. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, I've looked at all the halls upstairs. I guess I'll look around down here. Now, don't stay down here too long, dear. It's getting late, and there's no lights in the halls. The accommodations in these old European hotels are terrible. Mother, before you leave, can I ask you a question? Of course, dear. What about? Well, when you first met Father, was it love at first sight? I mean, can such things really happen? Well, it certainly was a whirlwind courtship. You know, I suppose a girl can meet a man for the first time and know that it's Mr. Wright. But it's better to know a little more about Mr. Wright than I knew about your father. <laughs> there are less shocks than surprises that way. <laughs> well, you still love him, don't you? Oh, Miriam. More than anything in the world. Well, will you do me a favor and try to overlook little of what he does? And maybe he won't try so hard to upset you. Well, it's hard to change overnight, but... Okay, I'll try. Now, you get upstairs. It's getting chilly. I won't stay too long, Mother. Take a walk in the morning, have dinner together tomorrow night, and then we'll go dancing on the terrace in the moonlight. Uh, fetch and carry, fetch and carry. Move this body from here to there. Uh, uh hello. Ooh, ooh. Have you seen Mr. Talbot? Uh, no. <laughs> well, when you stand, will you let him know that Miss Woodknocker's looking forward to playing tennis in the morning? I don't have any fun. Nobody asked me to play tennis. <laughs> and I'm a good tennis player, too. <laughs> now, I'll have fun with everyone once I get that crystal. Where is it? All right, here comes it. Yeah. I have no idea what it means. Find another insomniac wandering the dark halls of the night, searching for that relief. That peace that never comes. And then you're ready to get up. Oh, darling, I know how you feel. As soon as the sun goes down, my eyes are wide open. Oh, I love the way you say, darling, darling, darling. Oh, darling. Yes. <laughs> Why, the room has arrived. Ah, once knew an elephant with a trunk like that. It was too small, so we sold it for forty dollars. In fact, that's a trunk. Isn't it beautiful, darling? I got it in Egypt. I gypped you too, eh? <laughs> Reminds me of a girl I once knew. She was fair, fat, and forty, and her bank account wasn't too shabby either. She looked like the Prince of Wales, not the present Prince of Wales, but the former Prince of Wales. And when I say Wales, I mean Wales. <laughs> Believe me, I know a whale when I see one. Darling, you are so full of empty. Can you see it from there? I always get like this when I eat radishes. <laughs> Would you like a drink? Ah, I never touch the stuff. I have a terrible craving for a Bloody Mary. Oh, I bet you do. Pop, Pop, I've been looking all over for you. Well, I'll look up in my room. If I'm not there, I'll probably be out in the garden under a cabbage leaf. But, Pop, this is serious. There's a man in the mummy case, and Mr. Frankenmeyer is really Dr. Frankenstein. And he's trying to steal your brain with this machine that uses a crystal. That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Why should he steal my brain when he could have it for thirty-two fifty? And then he blows the tax. Let me smell your breath. Ah, <laughs> uh, just as I thought. You gotta lay out the Kool-Aid. But it's true. Look in the mummy case. Very well, my good man. Oh, let me try that again. You didn't say this was a 
music box. Does it play Home Home on the Range? Don't. 
You advertise this place as a quiet, restful retreat. So far, everybody's been running around screaming. I'm not a real man, Mr. Frankemeyer. Got to take a lot of pills. Got to take blue pills, red pills, yellow pills, nerve pills, and pills to remind me to take pills. In fact, remind me. Take one. You can't mean you take these pills. Oh, my golf ball. I wonder what I hit off the tee this morning. Remember, I'm not a real man, and I've got to have quiet. Quiet! to me! Is that man a lunatic or one of your new creations, Henry? <laughs> He's an American! Igor, get me a drink! I have heard of Americans. Perhaps we should go to America. A fresh new country. Fresh faces. New blood. <laughs> my beautiful men! My jealous darling, Natasha. Of what should I be jealous? A silly woman who screams at that? Natasha, you know I love only you. You are the moon of my night. Without you, I'm a hollow shell, doomed to fly through the night. A love lord monster. The monster? Oh, I completely forgot. The monster. I probably roaming the countryside, wrecking havoc and destruction. Oh, <laughs> quickly, Igor, get the shackles. We must find him. It's nearly eleven o'clock. We must have him back before then. Please, my friends, I need your help. Fly over the forest and see if you can see him. Igor and I will search the village and the brewery. No, I will search the brewery. Done. Watch out for the tree on your left. Oh. <laughs> All I wanted was a brain. Like, I finally got him to put his ear. 
hair plucked in it, and that worked for a while until the wall started shaking. This certainly is not my idea of a quiet, restful retreat. But, Mom, I've got to talk to Pop. You just have to wait. Why don't you talk to me? I've been alone this entire day. Miriam has been out with Mr. Talbot since early this morning. I was hardly able to say, how do you do? And she drug him out the door, through the garden, and down the hillside. I haven't seen Mr. Frankenmeyer all day, and Mr. Igor has been running in and out without so much as a beg your pardon. <laughs> oh, beg your pardon. <laughs>
seems to be going right. There was so much energy in the machine that it nearly blew up. It was only a miracle that it didn't. We got back with the creature just in time. I have been working all day trying to get it repaired and ready for tonight. Talbot has gone with the crystal. The crystal? Oh, it's a critical part of the machine I was telling you about. I wish I had a recording of this so I wouldn't have to repeat it to everyone who walks in the room. Anyway, Talbot has gone with the crystal. Igor is acting strange. I can't trust anyone anymore. Natasha, darling, <laughs> if you will help me with my experiment, I will do anything to make it up to you. Well, darling, when you put it that way, how can I refuse you? What do you want me to do? We must get the crystal planted on Mr. Woodknocker before 11 o'clock. The machine is building energy again. This time I have set the automatic controls so that nothing will stop it. At 11 o'clock, it will automatically switch brains. I will get the crystal and give it to you, and then you snuggle up to Mr. Woodknocker and slip it in his pocket. So I went over and said, Madam, I'm terribly sorry. My son's toast landed in your plate. If it should happen again, I should see that he throws a jam with it. Well, Mother's just furious. Oh, good evening, Miss Woodknocker, Mr. Talbot. So, Mr. Frankenmeyer, have you met the Countess, Larry? No, I don't believe I have. This is the Countess Nobrinsky, Mr. Talbot. Charmed, I'm sure, Mr. Talbot. I have heard of you, but never did I think we would meet. Though I must say, you look strangely familiar, as if we had already met. Oh, I've heard of you too, Countess, and your illustrious husband. Oh, oh, young people are so happy together. I remember how it was to be young. Well, Henry, I will be back before you're ready to proceed. I must take some exercise. Ah, oh, the children of the night. What beautiful music they make. Talbot. I must speak with you. Yes, yes. Mary, it's been a wonderful day. I'll never forget it. You must remember to wear that herb necklace I gave you. Never take it off. But Larry has such a terrible odor. Yes, I know. But it's a special device for warding off evil. You Europeans are so superstitious. I know, but wear it anyway. Talbot! Yes, yes. Now, I'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow? Oh no, you're having dinner with my family tonight. And then we're going dancing on the terrace in the moonlight. Moonlight? You men are all like. Mention the word dancing and you fall apart. Now I'm going up to change and I'll expect to see you later. Did you hear that? She expects to have dinner with me tonight. Oh, don't worry about that. You've got plenty of time before the moon rises. Now give me the crystal. I don't have it. What do you mean? I mean I don't have it. I woke up lying on the floor. I don't have the crystal. I barely had time to look for it before Miriam and her mother came in. You find that crystal, I'll see you doomed. Don't threaten me, doctor. I'm in control of myself now, but in a few hours. You find that crystal, I'll see you don't have to worry about that. I have a sleeping potion that will put you out cold for the night. And to make sure, I'll, I'll lock you in the dungeons below until we find a cure. But only if you find that crystal. And now get busy. Time is running out. I don't think. Oh, Cap, your stories are so thrilling. Please tell me more. A gracious good evening. Henry said we had other guests. You must introduce us, Henry. Oh, this is Mr. Talbot, the Count Alucard, and this is Mrs. McGonagall. Mr. Talbot, I have heard of you, but never, never did I think we would meet. How did you know? I read the script. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I was just telling Mrs. McGonagall about my castle in Transylvania. We must all come for a visit one day. We would all have such fun. The wonderful rugged countryside. It is so exhilarating to go hunting. The wolves with their fiery eyes glowing in the night. And oh, how I love to fly through the twinkly, through the cloudless nights over the twinkly lights of the villages, <laughs> nestled in the crags and valleys of the mountains. Oh, you have an airplane? How <laughs> fitting! I've always wanted to learn how to fly. <laughs> yes, perhaps I might teach you someday. Come, my dear Mrs. McGonagall, 
We will watch the moon rise over the mountains. It is such a wonderful sight to behold. It reminds me of the broken battlements of my castle. Oh, Count, I'd love to see your broken battlements. <laughs> <laughs> I can't go through with this. But we had a bargain. Yes, but to steal a man's brain, your monster is made from dead men. That's hideous enough. But to steal a living man's brain? But there was the mistakes of the past. And a, and a dead man's brain has too much deteriorated tissue. Even when we operated, we damaged the cells and the tissues. But the complete reassembly of the cells and tissues, think of it! I can't. I don't ask to be the wolf man. It's a disease, a curse. I don't willfully do it, but you, you are willfully doing evil. Oh, evil Smeevil, you think you are driven by a curse? Well, so am I, the curse of the unknown, the curse of the past, preying on the future. Failure is my curse, but I will not fail again. If your heart is so weak at the thought of the sacrifice of one man for the advancement of science... Advancement of what science? Is it going to save lives, make the world better? I refuse to discuss it further. If you won't put the crystal on Mr. Woodknocker, I'll do it myself. Just find that crystal before the moon rises, or it'll be too late to do anything about your problem. Master! Master! The machine is overheating! The dials are spinning! Oh, no! You touch something! I told you! No! Touch anything! Oh, why did this happen to me? I think I shall go mad! Find that crystal! Time is running out! Get away, you idiot! Go help Tom and find the crystal! I didn't touch anything. It's not nice to treat people the way he treats me. Maybe it's time I found myself a new master. How about you? No thanks. I have enough trouble looking after myself. Besides, it was your bumbling that got the crystal lost in the first place. You and your drug drinks. Well, with all I know about you, I'd have a fine tale to tell a certain young lady. Yes. Silence, you fool! You bring the word of this to anyone, and it will be your last breath. Now help me find that crystal. Yeah. Well, if I do find the crystal, I won't be giving it to you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's where you put it, wasn't it? Well, what'd you have to tell him for? 
How did you know where it was? Well, last night, while you and Mr. Franken, or, or Franken since Franken, uh, was there a convention here last night? <laughs> anyway, while you were taking a snooze in, in the box, Junior pinched the little bobble. So you know everything. Well, I know Junior's side of the boondoggle. What's yours? Does it really matter? Well, certainly. Every public nuisance is entitled to a defense. Only well, keep it short. I'm only here for a week. <laughs> well, what can I tell you that your son hasn't already told you? Well, who says I believe him? Well, he's, he's a good kid, but he only tells the truth as far as he knows it. I've got it all down here in my notebook. He says to Dr. Frankenstein, I can't take uh, it any longer. Uh, Either kill me or kill me. Uh, and then the doctor says, I'll tell my own story. Thank you very much. And then, Mr. Woodknocker, I'll walk out that door and you'll never see me again. But don't tell Miriam. Tell her I have some terminal disease and it would never work out between us. I'll be the judge of that. Well, you may not know me by my real name, Lawrence Talbot, but you have heard of the Wolfman. I'm the Wolfman. I told you, Pop. The real Wolfman, eh? I've heard of you, but never did I think we would be. You've been peeking at my script. Yeah. <laughs> well, I've searched for years for some cure, or at least some peace of mind. That's why I came to the doctor, to see if he could help me. He agreed to help me, but only if I agreed to help him with his experiment. His experiment turned out to be a plot to steal your brain. Using some machine in this crystal, he plans to switch your brain with that of what his, mom, his grandfather created. I'm ashamed to say that I agreed to help him, but only in the beginning. I'll have nothing to do with it now. That's a very interesting tale, Mr. Talbot, and it confirms Junior's side of the story. What are you going to do to him, Pop? Ah, oh, you never kick a man when he's down, son. Here, take the crystal. I get it to Frankenstein. I don't want it. But he'll only try to slip it to you when you least expect it. <laughs> Let him try. It'll be a sorry day when I can't bamboozle the likes of him. Besides, I need a little excitement. What about your nerves, Pop? My nerves will take care of themselves, but we've got to find a way to foul up the machinery around here. We don't have much time for that. I heard Frankenstein tell Igor that everything was ready for tonight, and all they needed was the crystal. I saw them in the secret passage in the dungeon. I saw the monster, too. That's what Mom saw in the hall last night. You think you could find your way back down there and throw a wrench into the works? I'll try. Well, hurry. And remember, Lady Godiva put all she had on a horse. All we've got is you. Don't worry. I know this place like the back of my hand. Well, now, Mr. Talbot, who's all involved in this plot? Well, Igor and I, of course. I don't know of anyone else. What about the Countess and that Alucard? Alucard is Dracula spelled backwards. He and the Countess are very jealous and constantly flirting in front of each other. I thought she was kind of friendly. I thought it was on account of my charm. You think they're involved in this plot? Well, if Frankenstein was desperate, he could use anyone. He and the Countess were talking when Miriam and I came back. Knowing human nature as I do, I'd say Frankenstein won't try anything himself. I got my money on the Countess. I think I'll have some fun tonight. Julius, I've been looking everywhere for you. You need to dress for dinner. I am dressed. You can't eat like that. <laughs> Why not? Julius, you bought two new tuxedos in Paris. I wanted you to wear one of them tonight. I bought those two monkey suits because they were on sale and they fit. I didn't say I was going to wear one. Uh, I will compromise. You wear one and I'll wear the other one. All I ask is that you dress halfway decently and not look like something the cat drag in. Would it be so hard for you to try to please me once in a while? Please don't embarrass me again the way you did on the boat. Mother. Oh. <laughs> Very well, Julius. Do whatever you please. I'll just wait for you upstairs. Oh, um, have you seen Junior? He's run off again. I sent him on an errand. Oh. It's the first argument she's given up in years. I'm trying very hard not to argue, Father. Well, what are you looking at? Haven't you ever seen an orange Julius? <laughs> <laughs> I never realized how much they argued till we came on this trip. Mother says I realize that giving Father an ultimatum will get her nowhere. On the ship, 
Father refused to wear his tuxedo when they were asked to dine at the captain's table. So Mother refused to speak with him. And What's the matter, Larry? You liked all my other stories. Uh, uh, not nothing. I relax. I, I don't be so gloomy. I'm not going to bite you. Fire. You have nice savings, too. You? <laughs> yes, Mary. Good. It, it's a wonderful evening, and we're going to have a wonderful time it's tonight. Not, I have to be leaving. Excuse leaving? me, Miss Woodknocker. You don't have time for talking to her. Where is the crystal? Here. Take it. Go to the devil. Don't be a goody goody around me, Talbot. <laughs> Has the Countess returned? The Countess. So that's who you're going to use? I figured as such. Don't bother yourself about that. You have a little problem with your own. And from the looks of you, we'd better hurry. I'll send Igor up with a sedative. He'll have to be injected. I'll talk to you in the morning. What was all that about? Nothing. Uh, listen, Miriam, do you still have that wolf spa the, the uh, herb necklace that I gave you? Yes. As silly as it is, I still have it. Right here. Oh, uh, good. Listen. Um, put it on, and remember, whatever happens, we did have a wonderful day. You're acting so strangely this evening. Uh, come over here and look at the mountain. Oh, they're so beautiful tonight. Oh, look, the moon is... Look, oh, 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 oh. I guess all the city lights attract me. Too many men in here, and I think it's you. 
Oh, Natasha, it's the same old story. Boy meets girl, Romeo and Juliet, Minneapolis and St. Paul. Whoa! Don't point that nose at me, it might go off. Aha, uh -huh. guard. To shave. Not even empty. Pass to the bye bye. Get on with your swine. How's that, my dear? You are wonderful, darling. Not the lessons that had me fancy. <laughs> Looks like she's out for the count. Wow. Alone at last, my dear. Why, I could sit in your lap all night as long as you don't stand up. Your eyes, how they shine, like the pants in my blue serge suit. What? Oh, that's no reflection on you, my dear. That's the reflection on my pants. Oh. Now you must tell me that you love me, and we could go away together to my bungalow. You could go on the inside, and I'd be on the outside trying to get in. Or you could be on the outside, and I'd be on the inside trying to get out. Or you could go upstairs, I could go downstairs. Ah, forget it. If you haven't heard from me by Friday, the whole thing's off. Will you marry me? Oh, Mr. Woodcocker, that would be big of me. Well, that'd be big of me, too. It'd be big of all of us. <laughs> Why? I've never heard of such a thing. I've gone up to Mrs. Woodcocker everything I heard. Ooh. I knew you were a cat all along. What a strange boy. She's more than strange, my dear. What are you going to do now? Well, I'm going to sit in your lap until the moon comes up. Oh, huh. oh. oh, excuse me. I didn't know you were busy. Where did he come from? Uh, from the fireplace, of course, and I wish he'd go back. Now you must meet me out in the garden, my dear. I can see it now. You and the moon. You wear a necktie, so I'll know who you are. Oh. And while the moon's sneaking around the clouds, I'll be sneaking around you. Huh? I heard Frankenstein tell Igor that he gave the crystal to the Countess. Well, she hasn't slipped it to me, and heaven knows I've given her plenty enough chance. What about that machine? I couldn't get close enough to it. Frankenstein kept filling with dials and changing levers. What are we going to do? Now you run back down there and look for your chance to get at that machine. And I'll get Frankenstein up here somehow. I don't believe a word of it, Mrs. McGonagall. My husband may be aggravating, but he is not unfaithful. Oh, but I heard him and I saw him. But are you sure? You said yourself you were coming out of a faint. <laughs> well, I've been mistaken. Well, if you don't want to take my word for it, I shall eat. In fact, I'm going up and pack my bags. I've been frightened by bats and chased by heaven knows what. And for all intents and purposes, have been called a liar. I'm going to visit the Count's castle. He promised to show me his broken battlements. <laughs> <laughs> well, this has been one mess of a vacation. Looks like I'm deserted by everyone now. Oh, excuse me. I did not r realize that the room was occupied. Well, the room isn't crowded. Come in. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Count Alnew Park from Transylvania. You remind me of the beautiful women of my country. Oh, how do you do? I'm enchanted. It is I who am enchanted. You have such a lovely neck, like a swan. Like Count. You shine like the moon of my night, rising above the rugged mountain peaks of my beautiful country. Oh, Count. I don't think you should talk like that. I mean, we just met. I hardly know you. Such an evening was made for getting acquainted. Now, Count, I am a married woman. I do not appreciate such advances. <laughs> I meant no offense, dear lady. I am but a lonesome traveler of the night. And you have reminded me of the beautiful women of my country. Forgive me for my brashness. I like your This is where I came in, you snake in the grass, you choke the hole. Julius, what are you doing there? Getting an earful, my dear. But don't worry, I shall save you from this measure. Oh, Julius, don't be so melodramatic. You have crossed me for the last time, Mr. Woodknocker. I shall destroy you. Uh, catch me first. <laughs> <laughs> Julius, how could you do such a terrible thing to this poor man? Well, 
Well, every man must defend his country. America, mom, and apple pie. Not necessarily in that order. Oh, what's going on down here? Oh, now what happened? The monster attacked me. Oh, no, man. What's going on down here? What's going on? Why, we're having a party. You know how to rumba? Oh, yes. Well, pick a number. <laughs> oh, get away from me. Julius, darling, I've been waiting for you. What does she mean, Julius, darling? Oh, I told you, there's something hanky-panky going on. <laughs> Why, nothing, my dear. She's uh, merely overwhelmed by my charm. Does he have the crystal? Do you mean this? How did you get it? Oh, now I've got it. Stop him! Stop him! It's nearly 11! Get that crystal! Stop him! into his monster. <laughs> Natasha, you gave that crystal to me. It was only a joke, my darling. <laughs> well, don't feel badly, Count. You can have it back. Thank you. I don't want it. Master! Master! The little boy's down by the machine! It's going to explode! <laughs> Mary, I'm going to stop trying to change you. Now, let that be a lesson to you, Miriam. 
If you can't change them before they're married, you're having a chance afterward. It's a good thing he's already changed. <laughs> Come, my dear, let us lodge with my fleas in the hills. Uh, flee to my lodge in the hills. Junior, <laughs> Mrs. McGonagall, we got packing to do. Marry him, keep him on a leash. <laughs> Well, it is wonderful to be me again. Even if the doctor's machine was a failure, he did cure me. Igor, where is the doctor? Oh, I don't know. But the last time I saw him, he was, he was by this cop and yelling something about that machine. Oh, well, I suppose we'll see him later. I hope he's given up these crazy dreams of his. Let's take that walk in the moonlight. Don't ask me to take a walk in the moonlight. <laughs> Igor, Igor, come down here and get me out of these chains. What do you mean, chaining me up in the dungeon? 